I am Big Ron Jones, your personal trainer, and I have three of my close friends. Well, one of them is a new friend, but I want you guys to meet her. I met her as well a few hours ago, and she's really interesting, so I'm glad she's here with us. A close friend of Dr. Sheila is who Michelle is. Then we also have Anjali, a close friend of mine. But I want to have to open up a toast, and this toast is to Women's Month, whether it be mental, um, um, health, or history, whatever it is, just a moment. So if y'all wouldn't mind, please let's let's let's, let's take a taste, a little toast to to you Cheers. all, Cheers. to you all, because Lord knows without you oh, things just don't go right, you know. Cheers. Absolutely, it sounds good. Big shout out to uh, Sovereign Brand Bel Air. Awesome sparkling wine. It's not champagne; it's a sparkling wine. Longer history behind that. Ladies, let's ask some questions. My advantage of being a career personal trainer was I was always privy to personal conversations that women have amongst themselves, but sometimes they don't even have it amongst themselves, which causes some women to feel like they're going through things alone. Right. Um, but they would speak it to me. So I was definitely hearing these things. So I want to take a moment to just acknowledge a few of these things that you guys are experiencing, as well as some of the things that you guys are doing to help or remedy what may or may not be issues that you see in your own world and the lives of other women you have out here. Um, you know, out here, the first one is this, if you could speak to your younger self, what would you have her to begin then versus what you began now? I don't care if it's mental health. I don't care if it's physical health, working out. Tell me, Dr. Sheila, what would you have said to your younger self 15, 20 years ago? Sheila, go pick up those weights <laughs> and three to four to even five times a week, you're going to figure out how to strengthen your body because in about... 20 or 30 years, you're going to have to take your mom through her dying season and you're going to show her how to better do it. So I would have told my younger self to prepare yourself to help prepare your mom. Mm. Mm. So being more physically sound Absolutely. to take care of those who aren't so independent Absolutely. anymore. Aging parents, a real interesting, real interesting matter. We'll get into that later on for sure, ladies. <laughs> Tell me this though, Anjali, what would you say to yourself if you could talk to yourself 15, 20 oh, years ago? So many things. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, I'm going to piggyback on that. I really wish I started my weight training a lot sooner because there's so many benefits. I've seen my body change in ways <laughs> that I never thought would happen. So I would definitely say weight training would be something big. That And also, if I could have started IT a lot sooner, getting into you know that field definitely, and also just being patient. Being patient with who? Myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I didn't meet mm -hmm. a goal, you know, like necessarily I set a goal out and I didn't meet it on time. Being patient with myself and having that grace, giving myself grace in time. So yeah. Grace. Giving mm -hmm. yourself grace, not being so hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. Patience, you patience, say, huh? Patience, yes. Hmm. Michelle, tell me if you could speak to yourself 15, 20 years ago, what would you? say to that younger Michelle? I'm going to piggyback on what she said mm -hmm. um, and say, you know, I um, would tell myself kind of forget perfection. Perfection, it's mm -hmm. just not out there. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we were the age that we had the magazines and we were following all that. Now they have social media, but, you know, we had all these picture perfect people who weren't real. It was all um, airbrushed. And so mm -hmm. we were trying to be perfect. Yeah. And I think that that I would be like, you don't be perfect. And then of course, pick up the weights. You know, I mean, that has been a huge thing that um, has changed my life. Yeah, yeah. strength training, definitely. Yeah. Huh? Well, you did say something I think is super interesting. I really want to ask you more about that one as well as you guys on um, what that was. And the idea of media presence in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The media presence in earlier years was largely magazines. Mm -hmm. um, be it a male, female, Both. rich, young, whoever the editor was, they edited a magazine that was going to impress upon you. Mm -hmm. Popular culture has always impressed upon the youth. Mm -hmm. um, they, call, they call it pop culture now. Same concept, popular mm -hmm. culture. Um, now it's social networks. Internet, yeah. Instagram, Facebook. These things are definitely impressing upon us. Mm -hmm. What do you think is still holding true now as far as the media impressing upon our youth now, our young ladies now, mm -hmm. that was still a boogeyman in the room in our much younger years. Striving what would you want to wanna see go? Striving to be per perfect. Perfection. Mm -hmm. Perfection. Um, having a perfect body, having mm -hmm. a perfect hair, 
perfect, you know, any, everything, everything has to be perfect. Everything we see is polished and it's finished. Mm. We don't see the beginning. Mm. We see the end product and we think that's it. And hey, I can just wake up. If I use this, I'm going to look just like her. So no, I would say that's mm-hmm. still the same thing. We're, we're still dealing with the same thing, different forms. False comparing okay. yourself to perfection. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, back to the point of strength training. You know, we were told, we were discussing that beauty, we were conditioned to believe that beauty was thin. Mm-hmm. Beauty mm-hmm. was soft. thin and soft, thin as and you soft. said. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so that is, that's the thing that we achieved. Not achieved, we wanted to achieve. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And now we look at some of that to a certain degree with social media now. Yes. But now that we are of a certain age, yes. we understand <laughs> know that we know better. We yes. lived better. We are mm-hmm. living better, I believe. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it's I think it still holds true. It still holds true, mm-hmm. definitely. Mm. Yeah. So that's definitely interesting. So I really hope the youth, I hope the young ladies are listening in, knowing that this is not new. No, being impressed no, upon by her. larger media no, sources, be it no. social media, yeah. be it the media of the news, TV, movie, Today. or magazine, yeah. it still mm-hmm. is not real. It's not real. You're only seeing a curated version right. of what you curated. think you want to be. Exactly. Right. Right. the end product with something they, they put together. Exactly. Right. The highlights, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Oh, man, that definitely is super interesting here. I'll tell you this much as well. Um, you guys keep mentioning strength training and the importance of it. Mm-hmm. If you had to rank order the three things I always speak about, mm-hmm. cardio, Strength training and recovery. Recovery is your sleeping and eating. If you had to rank order these things, <laughs> how would you rank order? We know they're all important, but how would you rank order these three recovery things? Recovery would be sleeping and eating. Recovery is your sleeping and eating. And you also have cardiovascular health, and you also have your strength training. If you had to rank order these three, Angelique, what would you say you would definitely personally want to turn up the volume on more so now at this point in your life. I'm going to disclose her age. Your age, she's on the other side of 40. We'll go there. I'm on the other side. Okay. You know, in the middle somewhere. All right. So right around now. <laughs> For me, you it's, strength, it's going to be strength training. Prioritizing more strength training mm-hmm. now? hmm Okay. Definitely. From a medical standpoint and from a personal standpoint, prioritizing which one of these three would you say? Because, because, because of the shortcoming of it, perhaps. Okay. Yeah. Recovery and sleep. Okay. Um, And it's one of those things that a lot of us don't think about. Memory is housed and the door is closed and the the lock is locked when we're sleeping. Mm. We have these uh, gray matter um, in our brains and that's where whenever we learn a new thing, we get these little wrinkles in our brains. Well, we have to go to sleep for all those little wrinkles to to, to take place and, 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 and become solid. And when you don't give yourself enough sleep you, we're not being able to um get to that point where mm-hmm. we are establishing memory mm-hmm. that's just one aspect mm-hmm. but when we look at muscle i'm learning <laughs> i understand it academically but understanding it as a athlete um i have to learn to go to sleep yeah. so sleep is definitely for me the the important, the one that I should be doing more of. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. What do you want to do more of, or think you should be doing more of, of these three? You know, I, I kind of do all of them. You okay. know, one of the things oh, that wow. I don't do, <laughs> well, I mean, I, Lucky. I prioritize <laughs> sleep. Yeah. So sleep is a priority. And that's one of the things that if I were to tell my younger self, mm-hmm. make sure you get, you know, enough mm-hmm. sleep because now I'm not getting nine hours a day, but there is a point in time where my brain says we need, to, you know, to cut this Shut off. <laughs> and so, um, I try to get at least seven. I know that there's more for other people, but yeah, for all those reasons that you just said, mm-hmm. in order for you to be better tomorrow, you have to get the sleep, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. and your whole body benefits from it. Yeah, you know, so you can go longer for your endurance, and you can go longer in the gym, and you can, you're, you're, you can talk your brain into things instead of your brain talking you out of things because you're tired. And you can talk I your like brain that, into things yeah. instead like of that. your brain talking you out of things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because of that one. That's that's good. That's definitely a sound bite we definitely have to use <laughs> for, sure, for sure to spread on to others. Yeah. Yeah. You know, shifting gears a tad bit here because health and wellness is, well, that's what I do, mm-hmm. right? Um, the wellness part of things is mental. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned earlier about referring to your parents in their mm-hmm. older age, mm-hmm. 70 plus, 75 plus, mm-hmm. being in their what you refer to as dying season. Mm-hmm which is a great way to put that mm-hmm. one because um, it could be a timely thing of brevity or yeah. much longer. Right. Yeah, a season, yeah. Are your parents still with you 
Um, I'll ask all of you. Yeah. But are your parents still with you? Mm-hmm. Yes. And what's it like taking care of them now if you are that they're not so independent? This is a thing that I think many of us are going through, but just aren't acknowledging. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's more I'm <laughs> my parents are, are pretty young still. OK. Um, so they're in their um, mid 70s. Okay. And so they're still pretty young. But I am starting to get all of those. Hey, I. <laughs> Hey, I'm in the hospital. I just want to let you know, you know, I was feeling tired. So we went, or, hey, you know, we went to the heart doctor and they're telling, mm-hmm. so I'm starting to get to have those conversations mm-hmm. and it's just kind of a wake up call for that. that. You're actually aging. As yeah. Well. But it's one of those things where I'm going to fight as hard as I can so mm-hmm. that in 20 years, I'm yeah. not doing that, yeah. you know, like so yeah, that, you know, exactly. I'm, you know, I don't know. And uh, I think that's part of what you were saying earlier. Mm-hmm. Tell your 20, yourself, you know, in 20, get 30 prepared. years, mm-hmm. get prepared, not to just be able to take care of them mm-hmm. so that. 20 years from then, you're not doing yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Because yeah. you feel like you're next in line. Yeah. Did you anticipate that part coming up as we envision life having, you know, marriage and kids and job <laughs> and all the things, but you never anticipated the idea of acknowledging your parents' mortality, them aging, wow. and what it meant to your world? Yeah. No, and to be honest, the first, my first brush with death was when, like, I think I was in um, high school. Mm. So I was like late teens before I even had someone close to me pass away. So mm. I didn't really know death until mm-hmm. later. I wouldn't say later in life, yeah. but most people yeah. experience it mm-hmm. earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Definitely so. Well, tell me this, Anjali. Are your parents with you still now? They're young and active. They're young and active. I don't have a worry yet, right? You have a worry not At this point, that's not, that's not okay. on my radar. So that's do you awesome. think you're doing They're the things? They're younger than me right now. <laughs> do you believe that you're doing the things that they were doing that allowed them to be so independent in their later stages of life? Yes. You are doing the things yes. that you think Yes, my dad is a, he Excellent. was a swimmer, he was a runner, and okay. he's, wow. he's doing great, yes, yeah, so. Wow. Wow. Sure enough, I get it then. And my mom, she was always the eater, like she was always ate clean, or she always, you know, was, drink water, drink water, so yes. Okay, so she balanced it out. Mm-hmm. So, so that impressing upon you is what helped exactly. you do the things mm-hmm. that you should be doing Starting now. Starting on the right path. Starting on the right path. <laughs> right. The blueprint that you follow. Mm-hmm. Yes. Great influence, beyond mm-hmm. the magazines, right? Mm-hmm. Tell me this, Doc. Um, at this point, he's referred to your parents mm-hmm. in their latter ages. What's it like? Um, because I do know personally mm-hmm. they are still here with mm-hmm. you. I know that personally. Mm-hmm. But what's it like now dealing with them not being so independent anymore <sighs> as it plays into your world? This is physical and mental. Um, yeah, it's all the things. Yeah. It's all the things. You know, it's like almost like having a baby. You know, you there's never a great time to have a baby, yeah. you know. And there's never a great time to have to reckon with your parents' mortality. It's yeah. never a great time to really understand that they, we don't we didn't come to stay. Yeah. And sometimes we don't get to choose how we leave. Right. Um, we can on this side yeah. um, prepare ourselves, but I am watching my mother, who is my shero and my mm-hmm. hero, um, go through her dying season in a way that I wish I could have changed. Um, but I'm giving her as much love as we all are galvanizing around her. But she is suffering from some of the pitfalls that um, in the African-American community, I'll be honest, are suffering from high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, the familiar uh, diseases that we tend Mm -hmm. to uh, fall prey to. And so it's hard, um, but it's sweet. Um, It gives me a chance to... Um, tell her I love her and march her what I say often to the ancestors. Mm-hmm. It's a slow walk. It's um, it's hard. Um, mm-hmm. So it's all the things. I'm grateful that my parent, my mom is still with me. My dad is like um, Fred Sanford and Evil Knievel yeah. kind of rolled into one. You can't tell them. He can't he, tell them my he parents are 82 them. years old and oh, so beautiful. he still has a mind that's sharp as a tack but his body and his mind sometimes they get the signals across. But um, you know, yeah, they're still with me. So it's all the things. It's yeah. all the things. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. I want to um, actually ask you guys about something I read earlier and I didn't read it actually. I saw it in the real. And I think the issue I saw on another podcast I watched was defining terms. Mm -hmm. The defining term or the term I want to define with you guys is Mm self-care. But as I watched this, I was like, you know what? There's a term that's being conflated with Mm self-care and that's actually pampering. Mm -hmm. As I understand Mm -hmm. it from my my career, personal training, (laughs) um, self-care was that woman or that man who came in routinely Mm -hmm. taking care of their cardiovascular health, Mm -hmm. doing those daily deposits 
for their strength training, mm-hmm. making those good decisions on behalf of replenishing the body, giving the body what it needed mm-hmm. to age properly mm-hmm. or gracefully. Mm-hmm. Um, and then pampering was what happened after hours, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, going for a, a facial on Saturday morning or a quick um, night out with the ladies or, or with the fellas yes. having some wine or whatever you guys are drinking. Mm-hmm. Anyways, let's define self-care versus pampering because I think it's very important for us to do this right now Mm -hmm. for everyone who's watching to understand (laughs) the difference Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as we define self-care how do you define self-care versus pampering doc self-care and I I like to give examples okay you know I have a wonderful patient that comes in and she's a wonderful runner she's a marathoner and she's a single mom and she's doing all the great things but she comes in to see her chiropractic practitioner because she understands that if her pelvis is aligned, if her spine is aligned, then her body, that machine works better. If she gets those seven hours of sleep, her machine works better. Mm. So that's caring Mm. for the body versus buying lovely sheets. While they're great, you know, Mm -hmm. buying lovely sheets, that's more of a pamper, right? right? Right. Um, Getting your hair washed regularly, that can be self-care and it can be pampering, you yeah, know? Right. If you yes. tend to have eczema in your scalp yes. or something like that, you keep your hair clean or you mm-hmm. eat clean so that the, the scalp is healthy. Yeah. So that's caring for your body, your body versus going and having a lovely shampoo, which may and or may not, <laughs> and a style, which may be, you know, a, a more, more of a pamper, gift yeah. and more of a pamper. Mm-hmm. So th- that's the difference between, you know, Caring for the body is making sure that machine works mm-hmm. as optimal and as efficient as it can. Possible, yes. So that's that's the difference for me. I, I love that 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 um, explanation, mm-hmm. Michelle. Please tell me what do you think? I was gonna say, like in my life, I, I really kind of. I mean, I'm 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 an empty nester now, mm-hmm. so it's okay. just me um, and my dog, and so <laughs> I have non-negotiables. You know, mm-hmm. so. There's non-negotiables for working out. There's non-negotiables for getting mm-hmm. the right rest. Yep. There's there's certain non-negotiables that I have with myself and with mm-hmm. others. You know, I prioritize that time. Just like I would prioritize a meeting that's been called, I prioritize that time mm-hmm. for myself. That to me is self-care. Mm-hmm. Now I still pan for myself. I still get the facials. Mm-hmm. I still uh-huh. get I get right. my nails done. Yeah. I still do all those things, yeah. you know. But those come after mm-hmm. the non-negotiables, that right? You have to pay for your bills, so you have yeah. to work. Okay. You know, I'm in school, so I'm, you know, doing that. And then on top of that, you know, I the non-negotiables. So time, there's no excuse. You can make excuses, but yeah. I don't, but I don't, you know. Okay. I try not to. Sure you know? understand. As per you, Anjali, <laughs> self-care versus Pampering. My self care is something I'm really that I'm I'm learning about myself is making sure I get my water intake, make yeah. sure I'm taking care of myself because it affects my skin, my hair, mm-hmm. everything. So mm-hmm. those are things I like about myself. I lo- I like that I'm not having blemishes or my hair is thriving. Mm-hmm. So I want to make sure I'm doing what I need to do and nourishing my body inside. Now my pampering is I have a standing nail appointment. I have to get my eyebrows waxed. Like, those are my pampering well, things. These are my go-to. But for the most part, just, you know, getting some sun, you know, when I can, yep. things like that. Those are things I would consider self-care for me. Sure enough, then. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. We're mm-hmm. on the same page. So I hope anyone listening again has understood the difference by us defining mm-hmm. self-care versus pampering. Mm-hmm. Not ignoring yourself for days and months and, dare I say, years on mm-hmm. end. And simply doing pampering techniques yes. for yourself, which does matter for mental reciprocity. Yeah. But those yes. daily deposits, right. weekly deposits, monthly deposits, right. are Pay more off. so, like you yeah. said a second ago, the non-negotiables yeah. that mm-hmm. really invest in our, our self-care. Mm-hmm. You mentioned empty nester a moment ago. Mm-hmm. And just so as those who don't understand what that means, it's defined <coughs> real fast. Empty nester is um, mom or dad mm-hmm. yeah. who, for the longest, as we all commonly do in a noble mm-hmm. way, mm-hmm. define who we are by way of taking care of children. Right. Mm-hmm. These children grow and go. Yes. Right. We find ourselves trying to find who we actually are. Absolutely. Yes. As a new empty nester, I'm assuming it was newer recently mm-hmm. at least. It's been a minute, but been yeah. Been a little while, okay. We're going to say new. As you think back over time then, um, how did you find your identity or reestablish your identity if you had to once those children left? You're no longer such and such as mom. You're simply Michelle. What did you do to recapture that identity if you feel like you had to? Um, I did because I, you know, for a long time I didn't know who I was. Uh-huh. Um, 
And I um, did a lot of things wrong. I made a lot of mistakes, to be honest with you, I'm trying to figure it out. Um, I also went through a divorce, you know, shortly mm-hmm. thereafter. So like it all kind of happened all at one time and, you know, mistakes were made, but you know, do you call them mistakes or you just call them learning opportunities, mm-hmm. you know, learning opportunities yeah, for me. Absolutely. Um, but, um, now, you know, you get into a groove where you have the things that fill you mm-hmm. and then the things that drain you. Mm-hmm. And um, it's kind of a, like a yin and yang. And once you figure out how, the things that fill you, you know, you continue to do those. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of just how I've redefined myself. Okay. Yeah. By defining what's fulfilling yeah. you and what's draining you. Yeah. And then from there, what's fulfilling you the most is probably where more so your, your identity. You yeah. Think more so. Yeah. I like that concept. It's a really good yeah. one. I yeah. got so much I'm walking away from myself. Right? I hope everyone else is as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> empty nester dot Sheila. Mm. <laughs> What did you do if you had to do anything yeah. when that daughter got up and left to school and you were left in the state of Georgia by yourself? I came home from Louisiana and fell on the floor and cried. <laughs> I could not believe my baby had they left you. And all of that to say, I allowed myself to feel all the things again. Yeah. I had people tell me, oh, she's not going off the wall. What's wrong with you? I had people to say, oh, it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. I had people say, I don't know what to say to you. Yeah. And I got to the point where I gave myself space to feel all the feels. Right. Mm -hmm. I felt sad. I felt alone. I felt regretful. I felt happy. Mm -hmm. Um, She and I sat down and she said to me, Mom, I could easily stay here in Atlanta. But if you know I stay, if I stay, I will always be here. Okay. I have Mm -hmm. to fly the nest. Mm -hmm. So we agreed. And then I came home and fell on the floor. <laughs> not in front but, of her, but of not in front yeah. of. Her. Well, you got to be was, strong in front of. Her. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so, so after feeling all the feels, I started allowing myself to do all the things that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. If it was small, I did it. Large, I did it. And then I found the things that I liked. I picked up weights. Mm-hmm. I didn't run as much. Um, I ate as often as I liked. Mm-hmm. I started making body butters. <laughs> I joined. I joined. I, I, I Crafty do, over I, here. I, I do a gazillion things. I joined boards. I left boards. And so I allowed myself to be who I was. Okay. And I have found, even in the weight training, I thought I was older than what I actually am. Mm. I thought that there was a way you were supposed to behave when you are a mother with a child of a certain age. Mm -hmm. And I realized I was still just a girl. I was still a girl who liked to weight lift and run with her friends Mm -hmm. and curse and say bad words and and, and give Mm -hmm. myself the, the, the bandwidth to be able to do it. So this has been the loneliest, the most mm. productive. Yeah. It's truly a yin yeah. and a yang. Yeah. And I love it. I love who I am. Yeah. Um, I have happened upon people in my lives who've shown me that, you know, you're not as old as you think you are. Right. And I'm like, hmm, I can still <laughs> wear designer earrings. So, you yes. know, there are things right. about me that I am still learning, unpacking yeah. and yeah. learning and accepting. Yeah. And I thought this was going to be a time of the beginning of the end. Mm-hmm. Who knows where I'll be next year this time. I know. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> being an empty nest, empty nester changed my life. It, right. it caused me to go deep and dark, but who I am blossoming to be now, um, I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I love it. That's great. Oh, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I love hearing that. I love hearing that. Yeah. You are not considered I, completely an empty nester. Nester. I only have one out. Because you only got one out and there's more <coughs> still come behind it. But I do want to leave this question with you first, though. Okay. Um, again, we're acknowledging uh, Women's Month, mm-hmm. um, whether that be uh, mental health, um, history. We still want to acknowledge all these things. But what would you say to that woman who is aging and now becoming keenly aware of it? Ooh. Mentally, physically, whatever it is, what advice do you issue to this woman? Mm. If I got to circle back, I promise you I will. You're going to have to circle, circle back. There's so much time packed. Doc, tell me. Doc, tell me. <laughs> Doc, tell me. What, what, what do you say to this woman who's, who's now acknowledging the fact that, you know what, things are shifting a little bit? I'm in denial still, so it's hard, kind of hard for me to <laughs> get that. So you're still grasping I'm this still grasping. Well, the interesting thing is this is 
the patient that I see regularly. I, I see women coming in thinking that they have frozen shoulder syndrome, oh, that yeah. they have adhesive capsulitis. And I sit them down and say, your hormones, you're just mm. ebbing and flowing. You are, it's not good, it's not bad. You're just entering into a different stage. And because I've allowed myself to feel all the feels mm -hmm. and find myself as a girl again, I stand as a testament mm -hmm. to them to say, hey, this isn't a bad thing. It's a change. Mm -hmm. You are 50. I'm 52. I'm the elder in the room. Mm -hmm. I'm 52. And I realize I can't eat as if I was 32. Okay. But it doesn't mean that I can't eat. Right. Yeah. I am 52. And I am the most, and I hope we don't have to bleep this out, the most sensual and sexual that I felt. Mm -hmm. I thought all that was gone. Yeah. Right. My limbs work. My yeah. arms work. Because I understand how to take care of the body that's 52. And so what I will tell them is that you're going through a change. Your body is changing. When you were 20, you weren't 10. Yeah. When you were, and I make this analogy. In our 20s, we are figuring out our bodies. Mm -hmm. In our 30s, usually someone's growing inside of our right. bodies. Yes. In our 40s, we're trying to say what the hell happened we're to our bodies. We're trying to reclaim bodies. our bodies. And in our and 50s, the 40s. <laughs> if you can understand what's happening with your body mm -hmm. along with how to treat your body, Wow. It's amazing. Mastery. It's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. What's it's, up? Please amazing. chime in. Chime in. Let me know. Yeah. No, everything, all, everything you know, yes. ditto. But <laughs> honestly, I think it's the challenge, challenging yourself, you know, knowing that age is but a number, mm -hmm. you know, and so I, you know, you have to feel all the feels sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, when, the, when you start to feel like that your body is changing, you don't feel like it's yours. You're like, how? Mm -hmm. Why? Um, but then you kind of get a grasp on it. I can tell you that weight training has been a huge influence for, for me and has Absolutely. really changed a lot. Yes. Um, I think we, we talked about it earlier. You fall back in love with yourself because mm -hmm. you yes. like the way you look. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and when you kind of just have that feeling for yourself, then that radiates out to others. Um, so... I don't, yeah, I mean, ditto. Yeah. <laughs> ditto to everything she did. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. is that me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, girl. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I really appreciate all you guys for sitting with me. Again, I thought it was important to have this conversation because as a career trainer, I have this conversation independently right. with each client. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But never so much in a group forum mm -hmm. or a group forum where millions potentially don't get nervous. Mm -hmm can watch this mm -hmm. and hear and know that they're not going through these things alone. Right. Empty nesting. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of parents who are aging, or as you refer to mm -hmm. the dying season, your body is not worse. It is not bad. Your body is different. different. You different. must learn this different. new body because right. it's still mm -hmm. a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know That's what right. I mean? Um, so I'm happy to have this conversation in front of everyone. Yes. Yeah. Super happy. So acknowledging women's history, women's health, mm -hmm. women's everything. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's have one more champagne toast. Two Again, women. I appreciate Official Bel Air for right. sponsoring this two women, podcast. Two women. <laughs> two women and all the things, right? And all the Absolutely. <laughs> mm. Mm. Thank you. If you enjoy a drink, please do so in moderation. I am Big Ron Jones with Product Advice for your real world goals.